Mankind faces ruin and despair. Professor? This night, in the year of our Lord 1047, marks the beginning of our journey together. A journey into darkness, into madness. Captain Picard? Is he the one? He has come far already, but he will be tested. Tested to the very limits of human endurance and beyond. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first annual Spooptober Marathon. <laughs> to kick off this year's spooky festivities, we are going to be looking into the Castlevania series in our first ever Death Mountaineers Marathon. Let's get into our first game, Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Released by Konami on October 5th, 2010 for the 360 PS3 and Microsoft Windows, Castlevania Lords of Shadow received critical acclaim, including a 9 out of 10 on Steam and an 85 out of 100 on Metacritic for its beautiful art, fun, action, gameplay, and its well-crafted story. Our protagonist is Gabriel Belmont, an orphan adopted by the Brotherhood of Light. Gabriel was noticed at a young age for being a talented fighter. Meanwhile, he was planning out his future with his beloved wife-to-be, Marie. Two days before the game's story begins, Marie is murdered, and Gabriel sets out to find a way to bring his wife back from the grave. Now, I like to play games blind for the most part, so I had no idea what I was getting into when I bought this for the PC. At first glance, this is a graphical masterpiece. Crisp, clear movements, great shadows and textures, gorgeous scenery and backgrounds, awesome gory horror scenes, fantastic battle animations, and all at a solid 1080p 60 frames per second. The only flaw is that the cutscenes are a little janky and are starting to show their age, but this is well masked by the rest of the game looking so beautiful. This is a level-based Castlevania in the third person view, a relatively modern throwback to the original Castlevania style of beat the levels, beat the boss, move on. It worked well in the classic systems because the focus was mostly on the platforming, but when transplanted onto a modern console, it turns into a beat-em-up with a minor focus on platforming, something that as a fan of the Metroidvania style, I'm not big on. So here's my first problem. Lords of Shadow is extremely linear and many, many paths in the game are very narrow, not allowing for the kind of exploration and discovery that I look for in the games that I like. I found this extremely frustrating as I ran into invisible walls countless times while trying to get a better look at part of the environment that I was exploring, and there's nothing worse than that in my opinion. One great way to take a player out of your game is to strictly limit their ability to immerse themselves in the given environment, constantly limiting movement to what is essentially a hallway, encourages running through the game and not looking around at the wonder that is the settings in this title, and definitely doesn't provoke the desire to find the secrets hidden in each level, especially when they're often guarded by annoying enemies or traps. Speaking of secrets, there are many. This game would be great for a completionist, but I just don't have that kind of time. There are upgrades everywhere to your arsenal, including health, light, and dark magic upgrades, which when five are placed in your seal, these elongate the given meter, and inventory boosters, which allow you to hold more items like daggers and holy water. Some of these you can find during your first playthrough, but many you have to go back to find after Gabriel is fully upgraded with the story given items. Replayability is a theme here, and there are four difficulty levels to test your skills, and the hardest mode is only unlocked after your first playthrough. Higher difficulty means stronger and more resilient enemies and much tougher boss battles, which are tough enough to begin with, believe me. Speaking of the difficulty, I played this game through on hard mode for my first time, and it was hard, but not in a challenging way, more in an annoying way. See, the fighting mechanics are in your typical third-person beat-em-up style, which means I spent the entirety of my playthrough mashing the X button and using the dodge mechanics. I personally dislike this style of gameplay, especially when the money you earn from solving puzzles and defeating enemies' bosses in all levels goes to buying combos, which I found frankly useless. It's pointless. None of them are much stronger than your X button mash combo and make it difficult to dodge while in the middle of one, and you'll be dodging a lot. All enemies have a super attack that cannot be blocked and they hurt. Badly. This makes it essentially impossible to pull off an entire combo without dodging anyway because your enemies get in a guard stance. They stop taking real damage and then charge with their unblockable move. It sucked and made fighting, which is 70% of the game, almost unbearable. On top of that, every time you die, which you will, a lot, you have to restart whatever battle you were in, unless for some reason there was an autosave in the middle of it, which can add a large amount of time onto your playthrough. Because of this, time becomes an issue with the game. There are many mechanics in Lords of Shadow that act as nothing but padding, and not only is it blatant, but it can be downright infuriating opening doors and gates can take up to 40 seconds and require quick time actions which are frankly pointless and I hate them and not only that but some levels require you to do the stupidest most pointless puzzles now I use the term puzzles loosely because many of them are just guessing games which is infuriating when you need to open a door with your light and dark magic by pressing buttons with no discernible differentiating features a task 
which drains your limited magics respectively, and every time you guess which button needs to be pressed by which magic wrong, the puzzle resets and you have to go sit by the mana fountain for 25 seconds to refill your mana, if there even is one around. What's the point? And then you have puzzles like this one here, which is so damn easy it's laughable, but it takes a good 5 minutes to complete because it's so difficult to aim your ground punches and just nah, I really hate when games do this. Now the platforming is a mixed bag of great wall crawling, giant leaps, and whips swinging like frickin' medieval Indiana Jones, and awful janky facepalm inducing hair tearing out bullshit. The climbing mechanics were ripped right out of Shadow of the Colossus. Though in Lords of Shadow, they're a bit more streamlined, so they work well and are a ton of fun. But when it comes to just hopping from platform to platform, it can be a total nightmare. The camera is very Resident Evil-esque, so in other words, it's fixed, and often in places that are great for scenery, but bad for precision jumping, making the most simple jumps next to impossible on several occasions. Okay, so let's get to the good part, guys. The story. Now, there is going to be spoilers here, so you have been warned. Like I said, I like to go into games blind, so going in I had no idea what was going on, but it turns out that Castlevania Lords of Shadow is essentially a prologue to the series. The story is a heartbreaking tale of love lost to untimely death, revenge, bravery, betrayal, a fall from grace, and redemption. Almost note for note Star Wars, like really though, Gabriel is Anakin Skywalker, just listen to this shit. So Gabriel's true love Marie is murdered, so he goes looking for a way to bring her back. Along the way he runs into the story's narrator, a man named Zobek. Zobek! acts as a guide and sets Gabriel off on his path, telling him that he can bring Marie back by using a mask that has been broken into three pieces, which are now held by the Lords of Shadow. Along the way, he fights the minions of each of the three lords respectively, werewolves, vampires, and the hordes of the undead. He runs into the demigod Pan, who tests Gabriel and offers him the chance to speak to Marie once more. Marie tells Gabriel that he is the chosen one who can lead the souls trapped in purgatory back to heaven by defeating the Lords of Shadow in the name of God. Gabriel also makes friends with a young girl who happens to be a mute psychic, along with her cursed golem knight. Unfortunately though, Gabriel Gabriel kills her in his sleep and then has to take out the pissed off golem to boot. He gets the golem's club though, so it's all good, but really Gabriel took that pretty hard. When he confronts the Lycan Lord of Shadow, it's explained that the three who founded the Brotherhood of Light got so good at being holy they took off into heaven to rule beside God, but left all their personal shittiness back on Earth, which then became the Lords of Shadow respectively. Gabriel now knows that to kill the Lords of Shadow is to kill the founders of his Brotherhood, but he does it anyway, eh, no big deal. In his battle against the second Lord of Shadow, Carmilla, Queen of Vampires, Gabriel is told over and over by the Queen that he will become a vampire himself, but he kills her ass, so it doesn't really seem like that's gonna happen. Next, he helps out a crazy witch whom Zobek Zoltan! proceeds to kill afterwards and is then confronted by Pan once again who helps teach Gabriel how to fight against dark and light magic. Gabriel kills Pan in self-defense and Pan's blood, being the blood of a god, opens a sacred path and finally grants Gabriel access to the land of the dead in order to fight the final dark lord and a dragon. It turns out that the final dark lord is Zobek himself. Zobek explains during his reveal that he was the mastermind behind everything. He shows images of Gabriel killing Marie under Zobek's influence and the little psychic girl as well. Zobek the Zoltan! then kills Gabriel, but is killed himself not two seconds later by fucking Satan. Meanwhile, Gabriel is in purgatory and Marie shows up. She wills the trapped spirits to bring Gabriel back to life, which they do. He arises and then kicks the living fuck out of Satan, sending him back to hell, freeing the spirits trapped in purgatory, and after a tearful goodbye, Marie leaves to heaven as well. Gabriel drops to his knees crying, and the game ends. But if you're a true Castlevania fan, then you should know that Gabriel's story didn't end there. Having begged forgiveness from God, he is allowed, or more forced, to keep his life to repent for his sins, something Gabriel is deeply unhappy about, seeing as all he wanted to do was Netflix and chill with Maria just one more time. Somewhere along the line, he loses his way and actually becomes Dracula himself. During my entire playthrough, I was wondering where Dracula was, and it turns out that it was Gabriel. That's right, Gabriel Belmont is Dracula slash Darth Vader. The story is truly epic and is really the one reason that I finished the game. Personal bias aside, there are issues with the actual gameplay that I find so irritating I had trouble finishing it. You can have a great story and an aesthetically beautiful game, but if the gameplay isn't fun, the game isn't good. And though there are fun parts, this game is extremely long and the fun moments I found few and far between, spread out by what I can only describe at best as tedium and at worst, boredom and frustration. Now, I'm not going to be playing this again, but I don't want to give it a negative score because I think this is a taste thing to a certain degree. If you liked God of War, Bayonetta, or even Dante's Inferno, you will love Castlevania Lords of Shadow. If you're a fan of Castlevania, I'd say this is worth a peek now that the price has gone down. Alright, so that was Castlevania Lords of Shadow, the first in our Spooptober Castlevania Marathon. Now, if you liked what you saw, make sure you smash that motherfucking like button. 
And if you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe to our channel right here, The Death Mountaineers. Uh, we are now on Twitter, right there. Uh, so make sure that you follow us so you can keep up with what we're doing. We put out special sneak peeks. Uh, we keep you up to date on our plans for the channel and upcoming episodes. And we are also looking into doing some polls, some fun stuff. So if you follow us there, you can directly communicate with us and it's a great way for us to reach our fans. And stay tuned for more Castlevania. We're going to be continuing to do this and other spooky themed episodes for the rest of the month. Have a great October, guys. Goodbye.